The Arab Spring inspired me and gave me some hope that we can change our world and, and we can think about things in a new way and we shouldn't just accept the way things have been done. Hi, my name is Ahmad Solomon. I'm a senior policy fellow for the Roosevelt Institute in the Center for Defense and Diplomacy. I'm Egyptian American, but I've been living in the States all my life. I go back to um, Egypt for the summers. In Egypt, I always just accepted the fact that um, we were living under this autocrat and the government was the way it was. Not only was it accepted by Egyptians, but it was accepted by the international community. It was accepted by the political science community. Everyone said that democracy doesn't work for Arabs. And what really inspired me was that these young folks in Egypt, guys and girls, men and women, they came out into the streets because they didn't accept the fact that democracy doesn't work for Arabs. It, it's really motivating and it, and, it bring, and it brings me great hope and bring, brings hope to young people everywhere that that uh, we don't have to accept the, the, the way we've been thinking for a long time. We don't have to accept what political scientists say is the way of the world right now, that we can really make change ourselves. Uh, my name is Erica Solanke, and I attend the University of California, Los Angeles. At Roosevelt, I'm the Senior Fellow for Economic Development. The FAD project is my capstone project, which stands for Financial Access at Birth. And this is a project that was founded by a professor at the business school at UCLA and Roosevelt has sort of latched onto the project and partnered um, with them. The idea is that every child that is born would um, receive a savings account with $100 US in it and it sounds very ambitious um, and somewhat unrealistic but when you get down to the core causes of underdevelopment, it really is the fact that many people don't have access to formal financial markets and they're unaware of all of the resources that come with that. This is not necessarily a panacea for development in other countries, but it's sort of to get a feeling for if we provide this, where can we see the country going? Where do we see the people going? And from there assessing what other types of resources and access we can provide. Currently, the founders are working with donors and um, we have a pilot program in the works. We have a yes from the prime minister and we're working with NGOs um, to see what the field work on the ground will be like. In my mind and personally, I think the focus is really educating our youth and millennials on financial literacy and how to be more aware of the financial problems that are affecting our country today and that are basically setting the backdrop for the country we will inherit in the future. My name is David Weinberger and I am the Senior Fellow for Energy and Environment with Roosevelt Institute Campus Network. In New York City, uh, there are a bunch of sustainable rooftop organizations. New York City green roofs, New York City white roofs, New York City blue roofs, you name it, they're, they're there. Not a whole lot of collusion between these organizations and I thought that Roosevelt could be a really good mediator between these organizations to optimize rooftop efficiency in a way that uh, boosts job creation, boosts food productivity, energy efficiency and generation in some cases, water retention. I'm working with nonprofits in New York City to develop a list of criteria and we're going to run students' ideas through those criteria and we're going to create a competition um, where we'll judge students' pieces based on how well they promote job creation, food productivity, energy efficiency, and conservation. One of the things that I wanted to kind of move in and address is this kind of battle for the sustainable rooftop space. I thought Roosevelt as kind of a third party could move in and start creating the conversation in a way that everyone kind of wins. What's really interesting is that we're able to connect students who have an engineering and urban planning background, an architecture background, an environmental planning background to the work that Roosevelt does. And so we're able to engage a whole new group of students in progressive policy activism. The policy centers of Roosevelt represent the distinctions between the different issue areas that we work in. Rajiv Narine, I'm a senior at the University of California, Davis. Uh, with respect to healthcare, uh, I view that as uh, both a goal and a set of issues. Uh, the goal in mind is to make sense of the Byzantine sense to which healthcare policy is created. Uh, we pass 1,000 page reform bills and literally nobody in this country can make sense of it, let alone uh, young people or other people affected by healthcare. So part of what I consider my role to be is to make sense of these issues to the public, highlight what works, um, put a light on what doesn't and ask people for better solutions. Um, my project idea aims to engage the Farm Bill. Uh, this is really tricky because the Farm Bill, so far as it goes through Congress over the past couple of decades, is notorious for how exclusive it is. 
the only folks who get to influence the development of this legislation, which, by the way, uh, carries as much as $238 billion of funding over several years, are um, industry executives in agriculture. Um, many times folks in, in rural states, even though the bill is supposed to impact the entire country. Um, and in fact, while it's called a farm bill, over 70% of its funding goes towards food stamps through the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. So we're looking at this in the Roosevelt Network, and, and one of the questions that came up is, how can we get people into the fold and get them to voice their ideas on how the farm bill should be developed? And an idea came out of looking at the Millennium Blueprint. Uh, what we'd like to do is we'd like to do our Think 2040 trainings across the country, work with organizations in partnership, find out what young people think their priorities and values are with respect to food and agriculture, and develop a blueprint for a farm bill from Young America. I'm Grayson Cooper. I'm a senior at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. I'm the Senior Fellow for Education Policy. So I came at this creating an online curriculum from kind of the perspective that we're, we're organized such that being the Senior Fellow for Education Policy, I'm theoretically supposed to know everything about education policy, and that's far from the case. Um, but rather I have you know, a pretty specialized subsection of knowledge, and as do my predecessors and as will my successors. And rather than letting that just kind of dissipate after I graduate, allowing there to be some legacy of that information that can go forward, and also allowing for there to be a platform where students can easily come in and learn, learn that information in a pretty quick and efficient manner, um, and also have the opportunity to kind of bounce ideas off each other or even ask questions. Um, so just basically, it's for every policy center, so you don't have to be a part of education um, to, to really benefit from this. And you can use it for anything. You can use it for initially coming up and saying, I'm really passionate about energy and the environment. And you might be able to go in there and say, well, solar energy, but really I'm interested instead in subsidies regarding solar technology and how that works um, in infrastructure and research investment. Um, so, so you can kind of go in and narrow down your interests to a specific um, topic and, and, and learn kind of the vocabulary behind that, the basic laws, and also have a couple suggestions for further re relevant research that we think is of really high quality. And it's all going to be really engaging. There's, there's videos, there's PowerPoints that you can go on, so it's not like you're going in and you're reading a full 10-page Wikipedia article, you're reading something written by students for students that we're hoping you can realistically do in about 45 minutes. My capstone project this year is going to be a comprehensive effort to develop and promote innovative ideas of students in issues of defense diplomacy and development. And so what this means is we're going to have uh, students write um, white papers on their ideas, and then we're gonna promote them through several channels. It's gonna be a mentorship program, and um, they're gonna be great opportunities for the, for the student to promote their ideas. But I'm gonna connect them with leaders in their field so that they can challenge the student's perspectives on the issues, and so that we can make this a really viable plan so that they can come up with innovative ideas, but uh, that are reasonable, and that will offer some, you know, uh, really uh, substantial insight into, into issues that um, we're dealing with right now. We invited all students but knew who we wanted, would have, could have, because we had their mothers, fathers, sisters, and brothers, and expected their children. We hired cops but called them counselors and resource officers. We got teachers but gave them no resources for their workforces. We opened our doors to the community, beep, 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 but not without metal detectors. We call these schools but built prisons. My name is May Mabulu. I'm from Tucson, Arizona, and I'm currently a senior at the University of Arizona. So for my project, I'm working on juvenile justice in Tucson, Arizona. And there's a certain level of getting the students aware of what juvenile justice means, school to prison pipeline. But it, there's another thing when you actually give them the power to start talking to administrations, to draft things out, to look at the budgets and be like, wow, this really isn't effective. Understanding the, the cost benefit of having a resource officer and the impact on students on their campus. And then two is the reduction in school referrals. 
by creating a bridge between the administration or whoever it is that holds a key that funnels students into the juvenile system and the criminal justice system. And third is reclaiming this idea that education is really powerful, especially um, K through 12 education, and it should be prioritized over punishment and any detention center. Thank you.